Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Paul is confident that these believers in the city of Philippi, they have begun following Jesus with sincerity. They have genuine hearts. And so Paul is confident that they will reach maturity in Christ. They'll keep on growing. God will keep using them, not because they're perfect, but because God is perfect. God will carry on the good work in them until the day of Christ Jesus. Amazing. It's right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, whether I'm in chains, we'll see he's in chains, right? Or defending and confirming the gospel. Paul only had two modes of life. He had two modes. He was like on or off, okay? One mode was he's out there preaching the gospel in the street, telling people why it's true. His other mode was he's in jail. Those are the two modes. Amazing. Um, Whether he's in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. This is Paul's most affectionate letter. He clearly loves them a lot. And he's not mad at them for anything like he is in some of his letters. Mad at some of the people. Uh, This is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. So here we see, what, what is Paul going after? What does he want for these people, this church that he loves so much? He, he wants that their love would abound more and more. They would grow in love. They would grow in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus to the glory and praise of God. Now, that's a lot of words. But if we were going to say very simply, what does Paul want for this church? It's the same thing he wanted for the church in Colossae. His main goal, this is very interesting. Paul's main goal is not even just that more and more people would say yes to Jesus. Now he does want that. He's always out in the street telling people about Jesus. But his main goal is not just that people would say, yes, I believe in Jesus. His main goal is that people would become mature in Christ. Just like in Colossians, his desire is the same for the Philippians. They have said yes to Jesus a long time ago in this case, but he is still pushing, he is still wrestling in prayer that they would become mature. What does that mean? That really, not just forgiven of their sins, but that they would become better and better people on the inside. They'd become more and more actually like Jesus on the inside. Why is this so important to Paul? Because it's the only thing that's important in life. It's the only thing that lasts beyond this life. And it's the only way to reach the whole world. If the church is full of people who say yes to Jesus, but we're all a bunch of jerks and we treat everybody around us badly, how many more people are going to want to come to Jesus? Well, nobody. But if people look at the church even if they disagree with the church, but they see people who are full of love, who treat each other well, who even treat their enemies well. This is a message. That in itself is boldness and the gospel going forward into the world. This is why Paul wants it. The most important thing is not that we get the balloon animals right at Summer Fun at the Park. It's not how many flyers we pass out. We should do all of that. It's what kind of people we are when we walk into those situations. It's what kind of people we are when we're at work, when we're at school, when we're driving through the parade traffic that kept us from getting to church on time. What kind of people are we in those moments? People, I mean, even if you weren't, hopefully you weren't yelling and cursing at people. None of you were. But what was going on in your heart when you were caught in traffic behind somebody keeping you from going to church? Was your heart full of, blessing and a desire for them to have good in their life it's a question huge point from chapter one and this is the main point that we use for our sermon illustration is this boldness advances the gospel even if you lose 